Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, we'll take few minutes to understand the basic background of this practice. Because understanding yourself is very necessary before you get into practice by yourself. So in day-to-day -day life, when you have any free time, when you open time, to practice a little bit. And at the same time, so whatever the other activities you perform, if you have the very basic understanding how the, regarding how the mind works, that will help for you to deeply, by the time, to develop a very good, solid spiritual foundation. Because you have to remember, it doesn't matter whatever the activities we perform, whatever the lifestyle we, we have, end of the day, you have to be with yourself. It doesn't matter whatever the theories or the, the whatever the believings or the whatever the, the ideologies we carry around the society. It is very important how you deal with yourself. Because when it comes to meditation, and when it comes to the vipassana meditation, the very key character of that, observing and recognizing that your own inner behavior. Why we have to recognize it? Because so far what we saw as ourselves, is something else. There is, a, there is an unknown part in you. There, in, uh, there is an unknown character in you. So that unknown behavior or the character or the thoughts play a bigger role in day-to-day -day life. We call it as a subconscious mind. Hold that everything. And through that, bring the, all the thoughts, we call it mental formation. There are certain roots. When you have a desire with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, when you like something, when you dislike something, when you grasp in something, when you reject something, when you hold it to something, when you resist something, when you like something, when you hate something, when you become happy, when you become sad, it's just the surface level. It is very easy for us to go with it. But the thing is here, underneath that, there is a deeper 
roots hold it to your own inner behavior which you don't see in day to day life so without seeing just go with the surface level of life is that the very conventional life and it it bring the the same thing again and again again and again so that is the continuation of life which you call the samsara so we are more comfortable with that but you have to remember that when you go deeper and you recognize this mechanism that recognition itself bring the ability to not to repeat it so most of time people try say uh, i want to detach so you can't detach like that how you can detach because you are itself the attachment when there is no attachment there is no you if you look very carefully whatever your character whatever your name or the form that everything that you have that itself the attachment so your mind and body itself the the uh, the result of attachment so then how you can say <laughs> i want to detach i want to stay detached so by thinking you can't do it so then how you can do it there is a way but by thinking you can't do it. so the you have to remember attachment come as a result of cause and effect it's not happened by mistake it's not happened because of the karma it's not happened because of someone else power so the attachment come as a result of cause and effect there are reasons for the attachment so once you get out of the reasons there is no attachment so one of the very huge big reason so as you know the the desire but i make it very simple before we go into the, the desire part the one of the major important thing is get into attachment that your imagination so when there is no imagination there is no attachment so why the imagination come there so the lack of clarity filled from the imagination the the the, the whatever the lack filled from the imagination so as example with your eye ear nose tongue body mind as example so this pen how i can attach to this when i not going to experience it exactly as it is what will happen when the when the the perception perceive through that my imagination increase regarding the pen related to the pen so otherwise if i really see the pen as it is in that very moment what happen in that very moment of experience which we call the reality in the reality there is no attachment try to catch it in the reality there is no attachment there is there is no way that you can have attachment so the reality means the your present moment of experience when you disconnect from the present moment of experience you go to the imagination 
So in the imagination, you are, the, the attachment can happen. So then how you can get out of the attachment? There's no way that you, by thinking, but only the thing is, when you come to the direct perception, when you really understand this, in that very moment of recognition, it's just the it's only the experience. It's only the experience. There is no gap for imagination. That is the way you get out of the, the attachment. And then once you have a moment of experience, it gives the understanding. It gives the understanding because in the reality, what you experience, that you can see the nature, that's mean the impermanent. But it is not by, it is not the impermanent what you understand by thinking, by words. So why it is so subtle, why it's so difficult in day-to-day -day life to recognize that? Because there, there is something in this nature, it's called entanglement. Entangle is that it's, uh, it's becoming twist together. That if you look very carefully, that most of things entangle in the material world. So that there is nothing can exist itself. So then, when it comes to ourselves, our thoughts, the mind, mental behavior, the mind the same. It always entangled with something. So, entanglement happened, this twist happened when it go with the thoughts to unentangle you have to get out of the thought so that is your moment of experience so in the moment of experience there is no Something you need to, to understand, or you need no, no need the help, or no need some another support to, to get into this. Because the, the very moment the appearance itself becomes the wisdom. And when it comes to that, there's there is no way that this togetherness is going to be there. So otherwise, so then with the breathing, how you can do this? Because when you observe the breathing, you can recognize this pattern, you can see this. Because the breathing in, in, in a very conventional life, the breathing related to the mind. So it entangled with the mind. So when you observe the inhalation and exhalation, by the time you can see the mind. So the mind entangled with the thoughts. So the thoughts entangle with the imagination. Imagination entangle with the, the desire. So like that, there is always something, something behind it. Through the vipassana, you are capable to understand this. So when the mentally that whatever the thoughts arise in you, feelings arise in you, that any kind of experience come to you. What happens when you see that, on the surface level, you're not going to that 
you're not going to get that experience as isolated, independent event. Because you know there is something behind it. So once you are capable to see beyond the experience, you are anymore not attached to the surface level of experience. So that, that mechanism, if you follow little by little, little by little, it's only in the moment. Only in the moment you can catch and you only in the moment you can experience that. That's why the practicing meditation is very necessary to get into that. But sometimes people practice meditation and get into the tranquility state and from there they go into the flow and stay on the flow. But Remember, in the vipassana, it's the very purpose of this meditation is not maintaining any experience. You, rec you go into the, the cause and effect to see the reasons. You, you're reasoning that all the <laughs> experience rather than hold or maintain that experience. So, when it comes to that kind of mental behavior, you recognize your identity, your name, that all the, the self, that everything that we we hold in our mind is just in the moment. That's why one time Nasurdin, this is a story that uh, he went to bank. He went to the bank and the teller asked him the identity card. So what the Nasurdin did? <laughs> he took the mirror and <laughs> he showed his own reflection and so this is my identity. <laughs> so like that, you know. So just imagine that the, 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 your identity you take, took, the picture you took, maybe many years ago. And sometimes you see it's like a five years, ten years old identity. So you can't recognize it. It's, but we, we hold it to that. We hold it to our own appearance and we have a deeper struggle ourselves to maintain as who we are. We are not going to welcome, we are not going to accept the very next moment. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever the meditation we practice sometimes in deeper in us, we are not ready to, to really 100% welcome the next moment as a very fresh, new beginning. We always had deeper have a continuation inside us, repetition inside us. We always have a deeper desire with our own history. So can you be a person, even for a one moment, to drop that all and be with your moment of experience? with the whatever the primary mental object that you select. In our case, with the breathing. Can you, can you just be with the breathing in that very moment to drop that all the, the history? And that become a skill. But it is not about thinking about it. That is, that is my point here. You have to understand that Completely 100% harness, be with the, synchronize with the, merge with the, the moment of experience. And then it's a moment by moment, moment by moment, go with the newness, knowingly, knowingly, how things come to be as they are, how you experience, how that, how it become experience. 
And that is where you completely understand the causation. And that is where you understand this becoming, this experience, this moment is itself the result of this everything. So then there is no, someone can detach from something. Because that the someone itself, the attachment. So that become because of the, the history that we depend on that and repetition and so kind of. So then bring a, bring a skill to yourself. You can't do it maybe for 24 seven, but at least for while you practice here. Just breath by breath, when the, when the inhalation happens, when you clearly see that, experience it and welcome it. Be a new person to that. Don't go with your, your history. Don't go with your, your name. You don't, you don't go with your imagination. You don't go with your mental image yourself. When an inhalation happens, you accept it as a completely new and you are you're going to be a completely new person. And the exhalation happens. The releasing, when you recognize it as exhalation, that what you experience in that very moment with the inhalation, can you let go and be completely neutral and be ready and become kind of like a come to the very neutral moment to not to hold it to not to kind of like a reflect on that whatever the, the moment you went through can you can you completely just imagine you went through million years Life journey. Now you keep as example. You keep running, running, running this marathon, and your exhalation in this in this very moment, not the beginning of exhalation. Your end of the exhalation. Just imagine, that is the finishing line of your samsaric journey. How about that? Can you catch it like that way? You know, you keep running with this name and form, the experience, repetition, the memory, imagination, the thoughts, the desires, the will, with this everything, you keep running, running, running to, you know, you have an unfinished job to do that, you know. And then just imagine in the tip of that, end of your inhalation, exhalation, when it go out of you, before it, the inhalation happened again, when the, when the end, edge of the exhalation, can you come to the moment and settle down like you came to the finish line? There is no any more race. There is, any, there is no more to run. If you can come to that moment, that you see that in the very naturally the, the very next inhalation happens the very naturally. That is where in the beginning of that inhalation come. You feel the bliss. And you completely become, it's kind of like a new, newly born baby experience the life. And that is where you understand this newness. That is where you don't look back. That is where you don't want to, you know, go back and struggle with it. And sometimes look, you know, we have a memory with sometimes in our childhood. They're gone, you know, but still we have kind of like a, like a clouds in our, our head, you know, we have a picture about them. And our loved ones, our brothers, sisters, parents, 
and husband, wife, children, maybe you know they're all gone. But there's something we, we have a kind of like, a, you know, some, some picture we hold. It's kind of like a, we have a taste, we, feelings to, to go back or repeat or gain back. And when you clearly come to the edge of the exhalation and release that, and you recognize you had it and you done it. You had the life and you done it. In that very moment, you come to the point to understand that this reality is not your imagination. The reality is the moment that you experience and that is where you understand the bliss. And that is where you gain your wisdom to, to look for the moment you experience rather than hold or repeat your past. So when you come to that moment, your transformation, your liberation, your ultimate bliss of Nibbana is not far from you. But always you have to remember, this is your, this is the, our mental practice. But in day to day, why we have to practice this way? Because we used to live with the imagination and it also kind of like a mental practice. So now we have to reverse the pattern and erase the mental imagination and we can't use the thoughts to do that. So that's why we have to apply a new method. So the Buddha is the one who introduced this Vipassana level of method to, to get into the deeper roots and uproot that. And this entanglement to un entangle. So otherwise we always holding and jumping, holding and jumping. So in this very moment, take a few minutes yourself to settle down and just try to experience with your inhalation, exhalation. And rather than go with your memory, just try to to experience the moment itself as a very new moment, as a very brand new person. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and make it straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So scan head to toes three times yourself and say so Bhattiva. Oh, may I be well and happy three times. And take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please.
and allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens through the sensation, just recognize it. Do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe, also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya Maya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Patipatiya Buddham Pujemi Dhammam Pujemi Sangham Pujemi Adhaya Maya Patipatiya Jati Jaravya Dimaranam Aparibunjisam Idam Me Punya Kammanga Savakaya Vahanghotu Sabbadukkha Pamunchatu Blessed.